What's up guys, it's Real T Dragon, and I wanted to do a video today about Spider-Man, Iceberg, Explained. And I found this one on Twitter by, you know, Spider-Man Archives. He's the one who composed this whole image. The basic concept of an Iceberg video, by the way, is that there's different layers. And at the top layer, you have the part that everybody sees, you know, the Easter eggs that, you know, we commonly know about. The, it over here, it says Stan Lee, Pizza Time, Spider-Man mannequin, you know, funny memes or whatever. But the deeper you go into that iceberg and each level, you discover more interesting, cryptic, darker, interesting facts or like little cameos. So we're going to explore that and see how it comes out. You know, uh, I'm really excited. This is my first time doing a video like this and I want to do more videos like this on the channel and yeah let's just go for it man it's gonna be a long one hope you stick around for the whole thing hopefully we can both learn a lot about this i spent the whole day kind of compiling the information for this video and it took so long damn number one stanley cameos basically stanley pops up in every cartoon movie marvel related uh piece of media even in comic books and he's if you didn't know the creator of spider-man fantastic four iron man all these heroes that you grew up with he was one of the original creators who drew up and created these stories that we love and watch today so it's never been exactly portrayed of what his character is whenever they do cameo but it has been theorized and conspiracies by fans that he could be a watcher which is a race of beings like like the end of the universe that kind of watch over mainline events in the marvel universe excelsior as stanley would say rest in peace to one of my heroes morbius is connected to raimi spider-man and morbius is basically a living vampire he's a fictional character appearing in american comics marvel comics created by roy thomas so basically in the old spider-man movies the one that sam raimi's directed the first ones that really started this whole marvel genre of movies <laughs> uh morbius the vampire uh, there was photos on set that seemed to set him in the same universe as those movies. And with the rumors kind of following maybe Raimi's directing the next Doctor Strange movie, there'll be a way to connect everything because the next Doctor Strange movie is about the multiverse of madness. And that's really cool because it leads us back to the next Easter egg on this first tier which is Tobey Maguire in Doctor Strange 2. The website Phantom Wire has exclusively revealed that Tobey Maguire is gonna be in the Doctor Strange movie Multiverse of Madness. I think that's a rumor anyway. And also, since that is happening, at the end of this new Spider-Man 3 movie with uh, Tom Holland, it's gonna be revealed that Tobey Maguire is also in that and he pops up at the end to later play a role in the Doctor Strange movie, which, I hope it's true, man. Uh, we could see it. There's no confirmation officially from Marvel yet. So this is very much just a fandom wire thing, but you know, th these are theories, these are conspiracies, you know, and I love that they're just flying around. It would be so fun to see good boy Toby, my, my favorite Spider-Man in the, coming back into the mainstream light. It'd be so cool. Released in 2018, this little piece of time meme just went viral because of meme reasons and it's a good laugh it's a nice wholesome time with J. Joan one jameson and told me require peter parker spider-man mannequin so they said this was posted five years ago but basically i think the idea was that mary jane uh or kristen dunce was holding on to a mannequin of spider-man in that scene where her hair is flowing and she's flying to the wind you can see in this photo right and that's it. That's like the theory. That's the rumor. Is it a mannequin? Is it actually an actor? It's probably just a mannequin. And they use like a blowing fan to like make the hair fly. <laughs> Dang, that's kind of funny. Yeah, because it's not in her face. <laughs> All right, yeah. Spider-Man 4. In spite of lukewarm fan reception to part three, Spider-Man 3 of the Sam Raimi's movie, its impressive box office score convinced Sony to attempt to make a fourth film. Development began in 2008 with Raimi attached to direct and the core cast of previous films to return. Come 2009, however, 
Raimi dismissed the rumors that all three films were being made, instead confirming that only the fourth was under development. Sony hired James Vanderbilt in October of 2008 to pen the screenplay. After contacting David Cope, the writer of the first film, the script underwent further revision by playwright David Lindsay Abair and once more by Gary Ross, October 2009. On the subject of villains, Raimi considered showcasing the transformation of Dr. Kurt Connor into the Lizard, with Dylan Baker reprising his role. He also had plans to upgrade Bruce Campbell to a more significant role than his prior cameos. Which, if you guys didn't know, Bruce Campbell had a cameo in all of the Spider-Man movies, kind of alluding to maybe him being a villain or some kind of character in the future installments of this Tobey Maguire Raimi verse, but it never happened because Spider-Man 4 never came out. Anyway, going on, in December 2009, it was reported that John Malkovich was in talks to play the Vulture, with Anne Hathaway playing the Black Cat. Spider-Man has a sticky situation to crawl out of. As reported by Deadline Hollywood, Spider-Man 4 is caught up by a web of disagreements that will likely keep it from being released on May 5th, 2011 as planned. For the complication, Raimi reportedly went through four revisions of the script with different writers and still hated it. With so many issues, Sony canceled the film in January 2010. So it's unfortunate, but Spider-Man 4 never came out, but honestly, if Sam Raimi's wasn't feeling the script and didn't like the project for what it was and what it was going to become, then it was probably a good idea because uh, Spider-Man 3 was really rough. I mean, it still has maximum meme potential and it's an incredible movie, but the studio had a lot of hand in guiding how that turned out. And they're the reason why Spider-Man 3 turned out the way it did, where, you know, we had Venom in there and all these other heroes where I think originally Sam Raimi's wanted to keep it more simple and focus on just less villains. You know how the studios are, make more money. <laughs> Whew. That was level one, now to level two. That was a lot, dang. <laughs> Spider-Man 2.1 is a 2007 extended edition of 2004 Spider-Man 2. It features, oh, watch this, eight minutes of additional footage and new special features. I never owned Spider-Man 2.1. In fact, I never knew it existed before this, so that's really cool. It's one of my favorite Spider-Man movies, Spider-Man 2, where Dr. Octavius and Spider-Man go back and forth with their relationship, and Spider-Man tries to bring him back as a good guy, and at the end, he kind of does just try his best to salvage what he was gonna destroy, which was all of New York, so yeah. Great movies, Spider-Man 2, PS2. <laughs> Spider-Man 2 is a 2004 action-adventure video game based on the film of the same name while incorporating additional material of comic books published blah 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 blah. Spider-Man itself became the film in 2002. Yeah, so this is just about the Spider-Man 2 video game of the same name of the film. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot. That's just the way my research went into this. Toby in Into the Spider-Verse. So basically, the theory is that this Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie follows a young Mom Morales learning how to be a Spider-Man from a Peter Parker. And the Peter Parker, not the Peter Parker that mainlined in his universe, the one that he died. <laughs> what he's getting trained by is an alternative Peter Parker that came from a worse universe, but kind of hit all the notes, even the dancing scene in the piece of time scene of Tommy requires Spider-Man. So the theory is that, is he a connected, is this him? Or maybe he still hasn't been revealed yet. And we'll find out in future, like additions to this movie in the cinema verse. Cause I know they're making a second Spider-Man Spider-Verse movie. By the way, I'm kind of being surface level on some of these theories and concepts and conspiracies. If you want me to go deeper, let me know in the comments down below. And maybe I can make a video about it. There's just so much going on and so many topics we have to hit already that, you know, you're gonna get the little bare bones real quick. And then maybe I can dive in deeper if there's more interest, but it's a lot of research. It was kind of hard to find what I already have. Toby in Ultimate Spider-Man. <laughs> this is actually canon, by the way. So Ultimate Spider-Man, this is the comic book for it. You know, the flipping pages. You can see a picture right here, pop. 
basically Tobey Maguire was the main actor chosen to, for Spider-Man the movie, you know, and he's witnessed Dr. Octopus breaking on into the set to attack his ex-wife Rosalita. Tom McGuire, Abid, Arid, and Sam Raimi were eventually rescued by the real Spider-Man in that universe. There's a scene where they're making a Spider-Man movie and Tommy McGuire, Sam Raimi, Avi, Arid are right there. And the real Spider-Man saves him from Dr. Octopus. It's funny, man. Web suit. I'm not sure what aspect they meant for this. They probably just put it on there. But personally, the way I see it is like, I can understand why people get mad at seeing these suits in the movies because it's like how is Tommy Maguire or Peter Parker gonna make this suit that literally costs thousands of dollars to make and not even have like the functionality of a superhero suit where it doesn't get torn up in fact Tommy Maguire's suit gets torn up like Tommy Maguire could get paid thousands of dollars being a tailor seamstress in New York with his skills if he made that Spider-Man suit like he can make a full on living as a, some kind of fashion designer or et cetera, <laughs> versus just like making pizza and stuff, right? But gotta give it props, man. Tommy Maguire in that Spider-Man suit just looks so clean, man. Like I'd rather have him look clean than look be in a suit that he made himself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Moving on to level three of the iceberg, alternative costumes. We all know that Spider-Man has like 50 suits for whatever reason, especially in the video games, it's really fun. And so it's just nice to see his suit kind of update every movie in a little way. They even did that kind of in the, you know, Sam Raimi's version. They really did it in the Amazing Spider-Man version though. And that's like when it started like changing drastically every movie. And with the Sam Raimi's, you really had that Venom suit. That was what, the first time the suit like changed a lot. You were like, oh dude, that looks clean black spider-man suit mm. I actually just got a like a venom spider-man suit love it man it's so sick spider-man 4 poster so around this time a lot of fan-made posters for the spider-man 4 movie came out and nothing official I don't think I couldn't find any but it's on here right so I think the hype for spider-man 4 was at its peak because it had already been announced in 2008 and so we were just waiting for it to come out in 2011, but when it was canceled in 2010, we we're like, dang. And then they rebooted it with the Amazing Spider-Man, and then after that, Homecoming Spider-Man. So sadly, it never came out. And, and this is really cool now, animatronic Venom and Green Goblin. Okay, so there was a very accurate comic book version of Venom made for the movie, and they were testing out to see if they wanted to use it in the Sam Raimi's movie for Spider-Man 3, and also Green Goblin for like the past Spider-Man movies to see if they want to use this like monster looking Green Goblin versus the movie version they ended up with. Uh, and you can probably see like it would have been really scary and creepy man. These animatronics like they had scary faces and there are videos you guys have to check out. I'm gonna leave it in the description so, so be sure to check that out. There's a full video of like showing it animate and move and it's just creepy man. It's so fun. Spider-Man 3 concept art. Basically, we're seeing a lot of uh, Spider-Man and Venom together and like Spider-Man turning into Venom and the symbiote connecting to the suit. And it's really cool. I really wish we could have saw a version of this movie with just Spider-Man and the Venom symbiote. They decided to make Topher Grace from that Sunday show that he brought, AKA Venom in this movie. And you know what? I can't give my opinion, but it did look cute when he was doing the photo thing. And then Peter Parker or Toby was doing photo things. They kind of like reflect each other in a lot of ways, but they're like they're like the anti version of each other. Like they choose, they're like same characteristics in a lot of ways, but different choices. And that at the end of the day, with great powers come great responsibility. Oh, there's a connection. Maybe Sam Raimi's was making a statement. Like you can end up any way, but it's the choices you make on whether you're a hero or a symbiote villain. 9 11 trailer. So the T is originally with Spider-Man 2002 trailer, it had the iconic twin towers in the shot. And this is before they were shot down. And so they had to recut and redo like the movie for obvious reasons about the towers. So that happened. If you wanna watch that trailer, link in the bio, by the way, Spider-Man 4 video game. So Sam Raimi's Spider-Man already had like the data and the working 
of their new game in the works before the movie ever came out, which makes sense because you have the rig characters, you have them make the map and you have to upgrade that graphics as much as you can and if you know the villain you can already set up some stages and like a lot of the you know the combat basics there are a lot of videos out there kind of showing the beta version of this game and what could have been they never got far but if you want to watch that link in the bio again hello audio audio Round two, let's go. Level four, E3 trailer and show us trailer. Basically at E3, a trailer of Spider-Man 2002 was shown in it's a nostalgia bomb of classic FF sound effects and visual styles that's dated nowadays. Back in the early 2000s, we had these special videos that were like <laughs> very intense, very like, yo, this is action packed for you 90 kids. It's what y'all like, right? Cyberpunk-ish. And so that's what this uh, E3 trailer really is. Dr. Connor Symbiote. It was something of a shame given Sam Raimi's had been building up the lizard for years. There was a throwaway reference to Dr. Kurt Connors in 2002 Spider-Man. And he then made his big screen debut in 2004 Spider-Man 2 played by Dylan Baker. Connors was one of his Peter Parker's lecturers, impressed by his answers to a difficult question but generally concerned about his students' tardiness, he returned in 2007 Spider-Man 3, this time acting as a scientific consultant for Peter. Connors took the role of Reed Richards in the comic book story of the Venom symbiote's costume, helping Spider-Man understand what he was dealing with. This was an entirely comic book accurate role for Dr. Connor, who in Marvel Comics had served as both a lecturer and a scientific advisor to Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. Crucially, Raimi Spider-Man movies introduced Kurt Connors as an amputee, foreshadowing his experimentation with lizard DNA to regenerate his right arm. So if Spider-Man 4 came out, you better bet there could have been a Dr. Connor being slightly symbiotic, maybe. <laughs> I think it's cool. I really like how he has been a character throughout multiple movies. And Sam Raimi does this thing where he really loves to build up characters and give them a reason why they're mad, a reason why they have conflict and have the actors use that as fuel to bring to their characters. It's just a full world and it's real. and everything's fully realized and things are happening and it's like a realistic setting even though it's comic book right and that's the magic you know it's like Sam Raimi's so good at making something so fantastical unimaginable crazy and grounding that stuff man I would have loved to see it but sadly we never will but that's a little easter egg Eddie Brock as Spider-Man I'm not really sure what this is referring to other than him being in the symbiote suit him being Venom uh, I try to look up like a lot of different details, whether like he originally auditioned for the Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire, but I couldn't find any. Um, so there is this cool detail though, you know, Eddie Brock in the show, he's teasered at maybe in one of the prior movies before he shows up in three, where like one of the characters, Robbie Robertson said, Eddie, Eddie's been trying to get a picture of him for weeks. And we don't know whether he's referring to Eddie Brock specifically, but he does say Eddie, so maybe. There's a Punisher cameo. Let it be known. This is something I learned too. I didn't remember it back then. In a brief scene, we can see the Punisher in Spider-Man 2. Towards the end of the movie, when we see Mary Jane run out on the wedding to go with Peter, along the way, she, when she passed through a fountain, a man turns to look at her, and it is none other than the mercenary. Originally, it was planned to use actor Thomas Jane for this cameo, but due to problems with the actor agenda, it was decided to simply use his double, which is almost identical. The idea was to bring these two heroes together in the future. Spider-Man and Punisher together in one movie. Talk about epic. It has, still hasn't been done. It would be a really nice matchup to see. Fan edit circa 2002-2009. This was a whole tunnel in itself, maybe. I can make another video separately just about fan creations for this character. Even back then, it was just incredible. I like to consider myself the same. Watching through a lot of these videos, I realized like maybe I was one of those people making these fan edits because 
Man, I've been editing for a long time. <laughs> Alex Ross test footage. This is basically showing the animatronics I talked about earlier in the episode. Very cool, very neat. The realistic like goblin mask, the VFX company, by the way, is Amalgamated Dynamics. And this is their test footage showing off their green goblin, etc. Pirated copies. Back in the day, that piracy was huge, just kind of still is. TLDR, Sony said, we have uncovered examples of Spider-Man 2 being sold in Spider-Man 3 boxes in China, but thus far we can find no instance where Spider-Man 3 has appeared on Sony Pictures, a unit of Japanese electronics company, Sony Corp said similar hoaxes have occurred in the past ahead of the release of other major films. Dang, that's sad. Gwen in the final battle. Now I remember this one. Gwen shows up in Spider-Man 3 and she's throughout there in the whole movie and she's kind of like the love interest, but not of Peter Parker. Like, but she's kind of into him, It's, but it just doesn't feel right. Yeah, it's just a, Spider-Man 3 is such a funny movie. <laughs> <laughs> also, some cool facts. The actor for Gwen Stacy in Spider-Man 3 was Bryce Dallas Howard. And she is Eddie's one-time love interest before Peter Parker's. <laughs> and then she serves as the unintended rival to Mary Jane Watson. Other notable appearance of Gwen Stacy in the cinema universe is Emma Stone when she showed up to be side by side with Andrew Garfield in the Amazing Spider-Man movies and she played Gwen Stacy and she tragically uh, disappeared. I don't want to spoil it but fuck I, I think I just spoiled the movie for you. <laughs> anyway next one is Spider-Woman which is Gwen Stacy which is its own comic book universe of where Peter Parker died and Gwen Stacy became Spider-Woman played by actor Haley Seinfeld. Really good. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, great movie. If you haven't watched it, watch it, man. Getting deep, man. Level five. Black Cat, Black Cat, Black Cat, and Spider-Man 2. Sony moved from the Amazing Spider-Man era so fast, it's easy to forget how much both movies set up. This includes introducing Felicia Hardy in the Amazing Spider-Man 2, played by Felicity Jones, who becomes Harry Osborn's assistant. Hardy's alter ego in the comics is what that of cat burglar Black Cat. And when Jones was asked in an interview with Yahoo if she'd be open to play the role again, she had to say this, I'd love to play her again. She's a great character. My Michael Chabon, who's Michael Chabon? Let me tell you, <laughs> is an American novelist, screenwriter, columnist, short story writer born in Washington, D.C. He spent a year studying blah, 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 colleges. <laughs> Chabon also wrote the draft for 2004 Spider-Man 2, about a third of it, which was used for the final film. Chabon also wrote the draft for 2004 Spider-Man 2, about a third of it was used for the final film. Soon after Spider-Man 2 was released, director Sam Raimi mentioned that he hoped to hire Chabon to work on the film sequel if I can get him, but Chabon never worked on Spider-Man 3, unfortunately. Would have been nice if Sam Raimi's got what he wanted. I think we all would have liked what kind of movie would have came out, you know? <laughs> Vulture and Spider-Man 3. And currently, the Vulture is played by Michael Keaton in this MCU universe, but before then, you know, Spider-Man 3 could have been about the Vulture. Venom wasn't originally supposed to appear in Spider-Man 3, and Sam Raimi's wanted to use that time to set up the Vulture instead. Sony original Spider-Man trilogy was revolutionary, groundbreaking for its time, and much of that success is own to Raimi's storytelling. The more you know. Toby was in the MCU? <laughs> this is a big one. Everybody wishes this happened. Uh, really funny edits, by the way. Um, I couldn't find him actually in the MCU. I could just find fan edits and funny edits and just a lot of not real stuff that is like official. And But he might, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, we never know. Every It seems like it's heavily hinted, especially in this video, right? A foreshadow. Yo, if Toby's in it, leave a comment, man. In a few years, I, I hope so, man. 90s show was an inspiration. So basically, the 90s Spider-Man TV show, it's epic, it's fun, it's 
the stories are great. It's one of the best animated Spider-Man series of all time. It's what I grew up with. You remember that song, the Spider-Man song? It's like all techno punk, uh, kind of old school ravey and loud. It's like Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Anyway, the movies were heavily inspired by this series and it has touched us all as like kids and nostalgia factor growing up and seeing like little Easter egg and nods. Like I didn't grow up with the comic books. I grew up with this animated TV show. I grew up with the video games on Super Nintendo of Spider-Man. It wasn't until later, like in my later twenties that I got into the comic books. So yeah, shout out to the nineties show. That's my heart. That's my childhood, man. Much love. Sam Raimi's cameo. I don't know why this is on here because Sam Raimi doesn't cameo in his movies. I tried to look it up. I couldn't find anything, but there is a cameo of Bruce Campbell and maybe him becoming Mysterio in Spider-Man 4 that never came out. But this is something we keep on hitting in this video. And I feel like there's a lot of reaching here that were made by the fans. <laughs> in fact, this whole thing is a reach because it's like, is this supposed to be about Sam Raimi's cameo? Why am I talking about Bruce Campbell? It was all I could find. I I'm serious. I looked for a long time. This was so much research. This is like part two, man. And with that ends level five and we'll go on to level six. Raimi's suit in The Amazing Spider-Man. See, the deeper we go, the more like, I'm not sure if these are actually like looked up or if they're just made out of thin air because I didn't see The Amazing Spider-Man suit in any of The Amazing Spider-Man Wait, am I? Fuck, so much Spider-Man. What I'm saying is I did not see Sam Raimi's Spider-Man suit in the Amazing Spider-Man movies, any of them, but they are in the video games. And I had to look this up, okay? You can have different skins in the video games and you can wear the old, you know, Sam Raimi suit in the game versus the Amazing Spider-Man suit. It's just an option. And, but this is like plenty of video games. The new Spider-Man uh, PS4 video game did it. You know what I mean? So power to them. Um, man, it's getting really hard to research for this video. <laughs> Nelson Alexander Ross is an American comic book writer, artist known primarily for his painted interiors, covers, and design work. He first became known with the 1994 miniseries Marvels, on which he collaborated with Kurt Buswick for Marvel Comics. He has since done a variety of projects for both Marvel and DC Comics. <laughs> What is saying is that Alex Ross is like a notoriously amazing, talented artist and has done everything, including Spider Man. <laughs> and his logos and costumes are everywhere. And this guy's just prolific. And he's just in the Spider Man universe because he's helped mold some of those designs. So I think that's what they're getting at. Lost promo art. Um, this is kind of vague. Uh, this could lead to a lot of places, uh, but specifically what it made me think about, because we could always just pull up more things from Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man, or Homecoming Spider-Man, you know, all of them. But do we remember, do we remember Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark musical? Because I do. I've seen it. I saw it live. These photos you're about to see, our photos I took when I saw it live when I was in high school, bro. Yo, remember Bono and the Edge when they did this, man? Reeves Carney, he was the actor who was cast as Spider-Man. A lot of good songs, man. If you haven't heard about this musical, please go check out the music from it. You can YouTube it. Rise Above Spider-Man, that's one of the songs I really like. The Spider-Man, like the boy falls from the sky. Both those songs are on my playlist all the time. I've listened to them since I watched the musical back in the day. Let's bring the musical back, man. Like the musical was sadly ended because one of the actors was hospitalized. One of the stuntmen. Yeah, because there was like, when I saw it, there was like 20 Spider-Mans jumping around, you know, for the whole show and villains and flying. Like you have a Spider-Man to your right and then whoosh, he just swings down to the stage. It's crazy. And with all those acrobatics, I think one of the guys died. Rest in peace. I'm gonna sell this. And um, it was shut down. But I remember it being a really great musical. I remember I liked it a lot. 
and I wish I would have bought a t-shirt, but I was poor back then. So didn't end up doing that. Book adaptation. There are so many novels and stories of Spider-Man. I'll read you a couple. The Amazing Spider-Man Crime Campaign, Spider-Man Hostile Takeover, Dwayne Trilogy, Spider-Man Book Series, Doomsday Trilogy, X-Men and Spider-Man Times Arrow, Sinister Six Trilogy, Mary Jane, Mary Jane 2. Those are just a few. Wiki link in the bio if you want to go check out more and even look into some of these like little novels or book adaptations of Spider-Man. They're not comic books. They're books. Level seven. We can do this. We can do this today. It's got to happen today. Okay, Spider-Man 4 teaser exists. A lot of fan-made trailers online. I couldn't really find anything legitimate, but it might be out there. I don't recall hearing about it. Uh, but one thing's for sure, we love and miss Tobey Maguire being Spider-Man. That's exactly what I wrote. So <laughs> if you can find a teaser, please like let me know, message me or, you know, leave it in a comment and I'll make a video about it. I don't know. <laughs> I wish I could have found it. Damn. Randy Savage injury. So in 2002, Spider-Man, when Bonesaw McGraw was tossed into the ropes, he does a flip into them and kind of lands like on his neck. And I read that Macho Man Randy Savage, Bone Saw's actor, had a neck injury from this. Damn. That photo looks so painful, man. Ow. <laughs> Aunt Carnage. Imagine a world where Aunt May, the nice old lady, or the nice younger older lady in the newer Spider-Man movies, was bonded with the Carnage symbiote. Well, that happened in the comic book. <laughs> After a long with her husband and nephew and Miles Morales discovered the multiverse, they saw what was none other than a carnage and May. Trey stole GTA's Vice City coding for Spider-Man 2. Now, I don't know if you know about this, but video games work in engines or you recreate from them from code from scratch unity and real engine is you know things i'm familiar with and i kind of know about and with this comes assets and you use assets so it's easier to create games from scratch you don't have to start from just nothing you know something to work off of and so trey you know the well, i guess the guy who was working on spider-man 2 the video game went and got the codes, the assets of Grand Theft Auto and used that as a template to just recreate the Spider-Man game because there was a full city demo, things he could do, you know, walk around those animations. Everything was already kind of set up and rigged and all they had to do is just reskin them and maybe add some more animations, little keyframes here and there to make the body move like Spider-Man. Uh, here, I'll, I'll read you a little. A GTA clone is typically an action crime drama open world video game that usually contains driving shooting mechanics with a non-linear set of storyline missions and a great number of side missions and activities displayed on a mini map for the player. Some critics have extended the GTA clone label to the driver series despite the series starting out in 1992 Blah, 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 blah. It doesn't say Spider-Man. So, but with that being said, I can really find real concrete evidence on this. So just take it as a theory. Maybe they did. There's some similarities between the Spider-Man video games and GTA by City. But, you know, take it as a grain of salt. I didn't say nothing. The Amazing Spider-Man was supposed to have a prequel movie. Didn't know that, did you? Well, I do now because of researching because the comic was also one of the movie's plots would have been a prequel like Amazing Spider-Man 3 but it didn't happen would have been a great choice either what I think it's talking about right because I did my own research is that there's a comic book and it's kind of like the prequel of the movie plot and uh that should have been made a movie but they decided to do something else with the Spider-Man Amazing Spider-Man just kind of rush things and jump to different characters and whys and whats and it was supposed to be more prequel if you read the comic books once again i don't know that much about this i didn't want to read a comic book i didn't know where to find a comic book for this 
but I think that's the basic idea. Raimi's Spider-Man and Donner's Superman are in the same universe. It's again, nothing canon. I can find this one. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying my best. But I did find this Reddit post. Sam Raimi, Spider-Man Trilogy and Superman 1, 2, and 3. Observation. The plot of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man Trilogy is pretty much the same as the plot of Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. First movie is Origin. Second movie is Heroes Lose Power. Third movie is Hero Become Villain and Fight Themselves in order to become good again and fight the villains. I'm sure someone has pointed out, but 4 is just interesting to me. And you know what? Uh, art recreates from other arts we get inspired by other things nothing is original you know why mess up something that works at the end of the day we got three amazing spider-man movies and you know what we have three great superman movies so hey man dc and marvel have always been like neck to neck with each other and they just share ideas and at the end of the day, I'm glad there's both DC and Marvel, so let's not even get in a fight of comparison, okay? And I don't think the post was having that as intended, but I feel like some people in the comments are gonna be like, yo man, I think Spider-Man be biting man. you know, ideas. I'm like, man, ideas are shared. And look, Spider-Man is just not Superman. They're completely different characters, okay? Although the plot line is the same, the choices in between are all different. Okay? If you like Spider-Man, you better know that with great power, with great power comes great responsibility. And those are your choices you have to make. <laughs> Raimi's music in Sonic 06. It's not. I did a quick 10 to 15 minute Google search. And I couldn't find anything of Sam Raimi's music in any Sonic game. If it is, that is the coolest thing ever. That's like a life goal for me. Make music and put it in a Sonic game. But I couldn't find it, so I don't know. Spider-Man 2.2. So you remember Spider-Man 2.1? Well, Spider-Man 2.2 was supposed to be a seller extended edition uh, that had moments with JJJ in the Spider-Man suit and more brutal train fight scenes. And there were moments that were longer than the theoretical cut and simply um, it fixed certain things in the movies and filled in some loose ends that had to be taken out for the theater releases. Once again, I didn't know about this. Uh, kinda wanna own it. Like go. Level eight. Geno Morph, Venom, Venom Morph. Art by Ralph Lemonton. Lemonton? Lemonton? Art by Ralph Lemonton at Art Station. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful Xenomorph Venom slash Venom Morph. Have you already seen this? I think I'm putting it on the big screen. So beautiful. Such great art. Please find him and follow his social media. Ghost sighting in Spider-Man 3. Um, yeah, I couldn't find anything on this one either. I'm not quite sure what they're talking about. If you find anything, let me know. The closest thing I could find was something about Mysterio and Jake Gyllenhaal popping up on set but that wasn't for Spider-Man 3. <laughs> so I don't know, man. <laughs> it's like he shows up in the second Spider-Man movie for the new Spider-Man that's played by Tom Holland, which is called Spider-Man Far From Home. Lizard in Spider-Man 3. I don't really know why this is on level eight. It's kind of basic. We kind of talked about it earlier too, but yeah, Kirk Connor is the lizard. He never becomes it, but you know, it kind of alludes to him becoming that in a future movie. Like if Spider-Man 4 would have came out, I'm sure it would have been revealed that he would become the lizard uh, using the symbiote regeneration and whatnot. So that's what this one is talking about. We're, we're really at the bottom of the barrel here. Spectacular Spider-Man used deleted scenes, 12, 13, 09 CGI test. Do not research. Apparently, apparently we're not supposed to research this one. So you know what? I'll leave that to you guys. You guys want to look it up. <laughs> Warmy T trailer. We're real. I don't know what this is talking about. I looked it up. Couldn't really go anywhere. It did send me to a random YouTube channel with like some Superman trailer. Um, I think this is an inside joke with the person who made the iceberg and his friend. And it was probably on some Twitter thread that they were talking on. Toby on Sesame Street. Honestly, I could not find a single video of Toby McGuire in Sesame Street. Maybe he's talking about a character named Toby. Uh, once again, I couldn't find anything. So, 
I don't know. This real bottom of the barrel stuff, I wish I was good at a detector to discover it, but alas, sadly, uh, with regret, Tommy Wire is not in Sesame Street. He doesn't pop up once, not even for a slight cameo. James Franco personally canceled for Spider-Man 4. And I'm assuming it's saying that James Franco personally went out of his way to not be in Spider-Man 4, but it was never even really in the talks to being completed, right? They had, they, it got canceled. They didn't end up making the movie. So and maybe there was conflict with Sam Raimi's, but I'll be honest, I could not find it. I'm a terrible detective, but hey man, this is my job to make YouTube videos. So <laughs> I'm trying my best, please. Help me out maybe i should make a discord community so we can help each other out mr bean cameo now i think this, sh this should be phrased differently it should be phrased mr bean superhero spoofs because there is a slew of videos that are crazy i'll link them in the description by the way mr bean goes out and recreates the movies as him as spider-man or a superhero and it's hilarious. It's kind of funny. It's just like a Mr. Bean doing crazy stuff. <laughs> it's definitely worth the watch. I don't want to spoil it too much for you. Just check out the links. Enjoy. Spider-Man 4 fan trailer predicted Woody Harrelson as Carnage. I tried to look this up and I could not find it. And so if you have it, please let me know. I'll add it in the description. And if it, that link is in the description, then please try to help out i need help i need to make a discord community so i can be like hey this is what i'm making next please if you, someone wants to help me dummy check all my facts oh my god it would be great help thank you avi knows all so i kind of found this iceberg from a twitter account called earth 96283 spider-man 3 14 years later and they just this is the only place i can find it the quotation of Avi knows all. Avi knows all. Avi knows all. I don't know what it means, but they do. <laughs> so, um, thank you for letting me go down this iceberg journey. I want you to know I've spent like hours, like tw probably over 24 hours throughout a week or two trying to make this video, researching for it, editing it, trying to speak right for it. And, um, and it's all because of you, man. Thank you. Or woman. <laughs> Either way is great. Oh, is that it? That's it. Oh my gosh, we made it to the end. Yes. <laughs> oh man, that was a workout. I don't know if you guys know, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this on my channel. It might be the longest video where I just talk to the camera on my channel ever. I hope I did a good job. If I did, please let me know. I'm working on it. Once again, I'm like, I'm looking for help. I might make a Discord community if there's interest for this. We're 300,000 strong on this channel, and maybe we can convert some of that, and you guys can help me out a little bit more. If you're interested, leave a comment, and then maybe I'll leave it, you know, in the description. Uh, so okay, it's like a chat forum community where we can talk to each other and discover facts. Like I said at the beginning, I want to make a series of this and do this for more characters. I had ironically a lot of fun making this i know i seem frustrated but it's really i like the challenge i have to get better at this um just to get a little bit personal i didn't realize i was talking the wrong way my whole life with different like parts of my uh, vocals until i started taking vocal lessons so i've been slowly working on my vocals so it's easier for me to communicate and do it with a cl clear accent and not have like any weird noises come out of my throat so that being said, uh, this is just practice for me. And it's really fun that I get to make a really fun video out of it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep making these. Hopefully I just slowly get better. This is the first one. Thank you for watching. If you've gotten this far, you guys are amazing. Bless you, bless your heart. Uh, stay a hero, man. You're a hero for watching this, man. Help this me as a creator. <laughs> Uh, subscribe if you want to see more bell button um, i'm gonna be releasing skits too every now and then but i think a lot of more of my videos will be like this where i'm just talking about something specific and i really want to work at it till i get really good at it so i'll see you guys next time flip that like button
Realty Dragon signing out. Bye.